Hey everyone, welcome back to the Families Fly Free podcast. Um, today we're going to be talking all about Disney Vacation Club. So if you've listened to my podcast in the last few months, you may know that my family recently joined Disney Vacation Club over the summer. And as we are recording this today, we just got back from our first stay at a Disney Vacation Club villa over Thanksgiving. So this was our second uh, trip in a row over Thanksgiving to Disney World. Um, but just coming back from it was amazing. We loved staying at the Disney Vacation Club. But um, I wanted to bring on an expert for you today to explain some of the ins and outs of Disney Vacation Club because I know that... As we started to look into this, after I um, some of our families fly free members, we had had a webinar with them, and they really sold me on the whole concept. But that I still had lots of questions as a potential um, new member, um, just about some of the basics that you need to know. So um, today we have with us Chad Pennycuff of the My DVC Points podcast, um, and we're going to dig into some of the details with him. So first, Chad, will you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Chad Pennycuff. I am a community organizer here in the Disney space, right? I, I actually picked my title as the curator of magical stories because about five years ago, I started a podcast that was all about DVC members stories because for 15 years, I sat on the fence of should we buy DVC? Should we not? Timeshares are a ripoff, blah, 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 yep. blah, 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 blah. And we didn't travel. We had small kids at home. My wife was like, ah, I'm not going to do this. Finally, when our youngest got to four years old and we were done having kids, I was like, okay, enough. We need to revisit this DVC thing. And we finally had a conversation with one of her mother's coworkers who was a DVC member from Beach Club, like 20 years into this membership. And she sat down with us and explained it all through us. We joined a few Facebook groups. And I really came out with this theory that said people that are on the fence for DVC, they're looking for a mentor. They're looking for somebody who's not a salesperson that'll come back into them and walk them through this process. And so that's when I created the whole My DVC Points podcast where I do member interviews. And if you know a traditional Disney podcast style, one of the most popular show formats out there is called a trip report. Yep. Well, I looked at this and I said, why don't we do something called a membership report that says this is supposed to be vacations that last a lifetime. Why don't we create a show that talks about somebody's DVC journey as if it's a complete journey or a trip report? And all of my friends that create Disney podcasts are like, oh, that'll never take off. That'll never take off. I put it out there. It took off like wildfire, Lynn. Like yeah, back in our love to hear how others have made something work, like fill in the blank. But I think I always love to listen to things like that. Yeah. I tell everybody we're kind of like the Amazon reviews for Disney vacation club, because some of our shows are like high level journeys. We have this whole new member series that I would really recommend anybody looking into it. Just go to mightybcpoints.com slash new members to complete podcast series and a playlist that we put together that said, Hey, listen to these episodes kind of in this order, and it'll walk you through this process. Yeah, and I know that when we, I always thought the same thing, like this is a timeshare scam. Why would we want to do this? And we've been, my husband's going to, been going to Disney since he was a little boy every year. You know, we honeymooned at Disney. So it's been a part of our experience. And it wasn't, as you're saying, until I heard, I did, I did ask our members to put together a webinar um, so that, because I wanted to know why, like, why are they spending so much on this? Like, how, how does this make sense? Right. And so we just asked them all the questions. And just like you had your friend who explained it to you, I mm -hmm. think that's the same thing that came across this complete love and enthusiasm for the program and how they were buying more contracts. And then they explained the financial side of it. And so that's what we kind of hope to do for you guys today, I think, is if you're new to Disney Vacation Club, if you have written it off as a timeshare scam is something that's too expensive. Give it a look because when, when I started to really, after that panel delve into it myself, I came upon the idea of, 
when you start to learn how, you know, Disney Vacation Club's value historically has gone up over time, different than any other timeshare out there. So if you can get with the idea that when you purchase a contract and you hold on to it for a period of time, say 10 years, 15 years, um, maybe you end up wanting to hold it forever, who knows, but um, certainly like through the period where you have kids or grandkids who want to go and you can sell it at some point in the future for at least what you bought it for, maybe for a profit as some of my members have done. And um, Chad and I were talking before he's done that as well. You just paid nothing to stay at Disney World for that whole time, or you made money to stay yeah. at Disney World. Yeah, Am last I right year, on that, Chad? Yeah, last year I had $80,000 taxable income that I had to account for to the IRS because I sold off about a thousand points because we looked at it and we were like, we kept buying and buying and buying and buying. And I looked down and I'm going, man, I have 1,685 points here. This is an insane amount of points. My dues were getting to be 11 grand a year. And I looked at my wife and I was like, why don't we just buy a house down there? Because then we have 365 availability. And I looked at what property taxes would be, all of the, the cost of having a house here. And so we bought a house, literally Disney's in my backyard. Wow. Like, <laughs> the trees in my backyard are owned by Disney. And when you're sitting at the kitchen table, you look up and watch fireworks. It's that close. That is awesome. Yeah. So you had kept, enough to do that based yeah, we, on your contract. We kept to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we sold off all of our resale contracts in order to do that because you're going to make the most money off of selling resale, right? And then I keep all of the benefits as well. But that's incredibly, that's realistically possible. Now, let me break something down for you, Lynn. Nobody with a real estate license will ever come back in and talk about this or tell you this. I'm not a licensed realtor. I don't sell the stuff. Okay. But this is a timeshare. It is deeded real estate. But most timeshares here in Florida, they drain another swamp. They pop one up and that's it. But what's difference is this one is attached to Disney and it has the Disney branding on it. You know, you're inside the bubble when you're staying at Disney Vacation Club. You've also got the world's largest media company out here creating movies, content, Avengers, Star Wars, Disney, Pixar, all of this stuff that drives people to want to stay and come to Disney. What better way to do it than to stay on property? And then that gets into the whole on property, off property benefit and in debate. I'm an on property guy when I'm here on vacation. Me too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't think it makes sense for you if you don't necessarily want to stay on property. But if you're someone who comes to Disney every year and you want to stay on property now, like you have to have the money to set aside for this, yeah. for this time period, right? Of 10 to 15 years. But if you do, I mean, to, and again, I'm no real estate, anything. I just started looking at this and going, wait a second. Why have I not heard anyone say this? I hadn't come across your show yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, this is it's an this, investment. could be, it's mm. this dirty little secret of DVC and everybody with a real estate license is trained like lemmings to say, not an investment, not an investment, not yeah. an investment. And okay. I'm not here telling you that this is an investment. I'm telling you, you can buy this thing. It is de deeded real estate. Look at the historical stuff. Go back to DVC resale market and look up some of their older, when they first started about seven years ago. What was their average resale prices then and trend it all out and look at it. That's it. Like, that's what blew me away when I went and looked at that data. And this is what's mind blowing about this, Lynn, is they're 50 year contracts. So you tend to think of it like it's a used car and it depreciates over time because there's less time left on the contracts. There's left points. There's less points on the contract year after year after year. The reality of it is Disney keeps raising the price of coming here more than the depreciation is. Mm. And then you've got this other factor that comes into it. And we've all been told, hey, never sign a contract under the influence of drugs or alcohol, right? The reality with DVC is people are buying this under the influence of pixie dust. <laughs> and it, it ought to be a controlled substance because- 
you have this great euphoria of kicking in from Disney and family time and everything else. And I just think that's driven by irrational behavior. And don't get me wrong, Lynn, I have an MBA in financial planning. <laughs> so I know investments like you wouldn't believe. I looked at this and I was like, I don't care what people say, if it's an investment or not, that's up for you guys to decide. I can tell you factually over time, this stuff goes up in price. Right. And the more Disney raises this up in price, the more it drags up the resale value of our contracts. Cause you can see time after time, after time, again, people bought in, I bought Saratoga at $50 a point. I held it my seven years, which by the way, the, the average in the timeshare industry is people hold their contracts seven to eight years and they're out. And based on what I can tell from talking to some of my sponsors that, that finance shows, Seven to eight years is about the average length of time a family holds a DVC contract. Through that time, their kids grow up, their kids become teenagers, they're not wanting to go to Disney anymore. Next thing you know, college is coming around the corner and you look down and you go, wow, I might have paid 20 grand for this contract, but now I got to pay college bills and this thing is worth 30. That is so nice. what do families do? Mm -hmm. They amputate the contract. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> And historically, this happens time and time and time again. The only thing I have for proof on it, and I started to do an episode on this, and I did all the research on it, and I'm talking with my sponsor, and he goes, you should really, you know, entitle this, this episode, did DVC members get paid to go on vacation? Yeah. And I was like, that's a little clickbaity for me. We're, we're kind of like stick to the facts, ma'am, kind of a, a, a deal. And I believe in content integrity and the stuff that I produce. So I'm not going to say you're going to get paid to go on vacation. I'm not going to say you're going to get this free. I'll just say, financially speaking, you're going to do okay. If you come to Disney two out of three years, then DVC might make sense for you, especially if you're wanting to come and stay at deluxe resorts. Now, if you're going to play the Marriott game and the Hilton game and stay off property and, and do all of those kind of things and, and do that for your Disney vacation, you might come out ahead. Okay. But you're not technically in the bubble or you're really close if you're staying at Swan and Dolphin on Marriott points. So I look at it like I would rather own this thing. I would rather have this as a member and be a part of the vacation club ride this thing out. And at the end of this contract, sell it. Because if you, you're, you, if you're, if you're talking about the financials of this, you have your initial investment as to what you pay for your points. You have the dues that you pay on this. And then the third thing is the opportunity cost. What could you have done with that money if you didn't right. buy DBC? And if you finance the contract, which I really don't like, but if you do finance the contract, you know exactly what you're, opportunity cost is it's called interest. So you can do the math on that Lynn. And so I tell people, Hey, look, make an informed, educated decision about DVC, but look at these factors, look at the historical resale value. And do you really think that they're going to not be the world's leader in family entertainment 10 years from now? I right. don't. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And we should say we're not accountants. Check with your accountant before you do any any such thing here. But I will say it from what the research I have done, I personally think definitely it's possible to stay there free. Definitely it's possible to get paid to stay there. We can't guarantee that. But if you Correct. Again, like you're saying, look at the historic data yourself and make an informed decision that, you know, feels right for you. But just open your eyes to that possibility rather than this is a monster expense to have to stay at Disney year after year. You're actually, even if you like, you're still going to come out better than paying to stay at these resorts directly. Mm -hmm. um, that math is very confusing, which we won't go into right now, but um, you can do the math on that and you will see that it's a much better deal as long as you use it every year. <clears throat> I think that's a really great paradigm to frame this in Lynn is to challenge conventional wisdom about how all timeshares are bad. Disney's yeah. the only one I know of that actually does go up in value, actually has a really strong resale market. I have a company that pays me for advertising to advertise to people 
who are looking and researching DBC to come back into them and send them leads. I have another company that pays me to get members to give them their points so that they can rent them out for them. So what other timeshare is out there that does that? Like it, it's, it's pretty rare. I will say this. It's, it's really, 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 really rare in my opinion. Yeah. And this is, again, like we're talking about mindset, opening your mind. This is the same thing we run into with flying free, traveling free, travel credit cards. I mean, like this is the whole idea of everyone assumes credit cards are bad. They're not bad. It's how you use them. <laughs> That's good or bad, right? If you can use them smartly, like we teach you to do, not pay the high interest, pay your balance and make, you know, earn points on every dollar you spend, now you have just maximized that system. And it's the same thing with flying free. It sounds too good to be true, but if you can open your mind to the possibility for a minute and let us show you, it's not. Like, it's hard to believe, but I don't know. I just think so many people don't stop to challenge what you're saying, the conventional wisdom on these things. <clears throat> yeah, it definitely is. And, and I can tell you, having served this community for five plus years in my own experience as well, there's a lot of people that come in, buy DVC, ride this out for it, however long that makes sense for their family. And then when they look done, they look back and they go, wow, this is worth a lot more than I paid for it. And if that's something that sounds intriguing to you, buy resale because you're going to so save. Yeah, yeah you're going to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's essentially two ways to buy DVC. You can buy it straight from Disney and those are from. You're buying this from Disney Vacation Club Development. This is the company that comes back in and they build the resorts and they convert it into timeshares and they cross all the legal hoops of making a resort into a timeshare through the state of Florida or whatever regulations and they sell these points as, as fractional timeshare membership. And that's what we did recently was we did yep. buy our contracts direct from Disney. We can talk more about that in a minute, but yeah. And when you do that and you buy enough points from Disney, you unlock what they call their membership extras program. You'll hear members refer to this as the blue card because back in the day, when you bought enough points from Disney, they used to send you a physical blue card in the mail. And anytime you wanted to get a discount on dining or merchandise or something else, you would have to show your blue card. So here in the member community, it just became as, you know, do you have a blue card? Okay. Yes or no. And that's kind of the, the whole magic of blue cardness, right? When you start to hear that in your other research, because my goal is to come back in and get people to starting to think here, but then equip them to go back in and do more research because it really, truly takes hours and hours and hours of research before you come in and buy Disney Vacation Club. That's my my whole premise and goal. You want to ask I, a lot of questions, I think. Yes. You want to understand this product and know every little intricacy about the product before you give up your hard-earned money. Never buy something you don't understand. Yes. And that's kind of why we have hours and hours and hours of shows, including the, the recommended playlist over at mydvcpoints.com slash new member, where we're going to walk you through all of these decisions you have to make. Everything from picking a home resort to direct versus resale to picking your use share to all of, all of those decisions that you have to make when you're going through this process. Yeah. And I can't tell you like how helpful that is. <laughs> Because there is a lot of lingo thrown around here that you don't know as someone who's new to Disney vacation, like blue card, you just threw that one. Yep. Right? You explain what that is, but it's stuff like that. Um, and there's use year. That's another one you mentioned. So you have to understand what is that and how, what use year makes sense for you. So to have a curated list of all the things that you need to know, um, super duper helpful uh, when you're trying to make a decision here. So Okay, so that's buying direct. And I, I did want to get the perks, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I felt like um, we purchased at Grand Floridian and they as we're recording, they do still have a discounted offer for that. And that's we decided to go for that one because it wasn't as cheap as buying resale, which he's gonna explain here in a minute, but um, it was close. 
we got the perks and I felt like looking at the historic data, Grand Floridian has been much higher than it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's lower because they just released new inventory and new rooms. And so I felt like that's, and that's a classic resort at Disney that I feel like mm -hmm. people are always going to want. So it seemed to me like a smart buy if we decide to resell it in the future. If somebody's listening to this and they're considering it, Grand Floridian is my resort of choice. That is where I would recommend you buy right now today. If you're buying in and you want to unlock these blue card benefits or this membership extras or whatever you want to call it. And the reason is really simple. So a couple of years back, well, first off, let me explain resale. Lynn, when we're done with our contracts and we say, you know what? we've kind of lost that love and feeling towards the mouse. It's, it's time to hand this That's off. to. A, well, believe it or not, Lynn, it happens. Okay. okay. Everybody right. thinks it doesn't happen and it's not going to happen to them, but there's a 50% chance in seven years you're done with this yeah. right now. It could be that you've really fell in love with the mouse, but there's a new resort that opened back up yeah. and you want to sell grand Floridian to buy the Disneyland tower hotel. Okay. That's, that's coming up here. You've, you know, got your training wheels on in the membership. You know what you're doing now. And you just look at it and go, Hey, I'd rather not own this resort. I'd rather own that one. Okay. So that happens as well. But when you're done with this membership, there's companies out there that specialize in finding you a buyer for this, because this is a deeded piece of real estate. So they are licensed real estate agents with the state of Florida, California, Hawaii, or South Carolina, where they can sell your real estate for you, just like a real estate agent. And there's a huge market of that. Matter of fact, they pay pretty well to get on my show so that they can start to reach that audience. And I think it's a beautiful thing because sometimes you just want to save some money and you don't really care about the perks. Right. And so that taught, explain that, how that you don't get the perks with resale and how that works exactly. So it's like this Disney's out here and they've created this product and they're marketing it. And this goes on with every timeshare developer out, known to man. People get tired of the timeshare and they want out. So they sell it to somebody else. And what happens is, is I could go buy grand flow points today and probably pay 40 to $60 less per point by buying it from a member who wants out as opposed to buying it straight from Disney, the manufacturer, you can kind of think of it like buying a used car versus buying a new car. Although I would tell you it's the same exact car, right? You're, you're just getting it from a different source, so to speak, because that's the same used bed. You're going to sleep in either way. It is, right. Like, but you don't it, get the blue card perks, right? Correct. If you buy from Disney, they come out here and they say, okay, well, we'll give you 20% off merchandise because you're a DVC member. We'll give you 10% off of a lot of sit down dinings. We'll let you come up to our lounge in the Epcot center that they pay staff and you can get, you know, a free Dixie cup of Coke zero out, out of the machine. Right. <laughs> Believe it or not, free soda at Disney, that's five bucks a person each way. So we hit it every time my family's here. So that's $25 in free soda. Every time we go up there, you do the math on it. If you're going up there four times a year, that's a hundred bucks a year in, in free soda. Okay. So it will pay for itself through the benefits and the discounts. So right? do you feel like it does the benefits? Like, I feel like the benefits are like icing on the cake, but it's not really enough to make it worth getting buying direct versus resale say. It really depends. Okay. And it depends on, are you going to be a long haul buyer, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to be a long haul buyer, you've got more time to recoup that investment right. because you're going to have to buy 150 points and at $60 a point, you're talking 15 grand or more. Right. And so there he's saying like, you, you have to buy at least 150 points direct from Disney to get the blue card benefits. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let me not do that math in my head because I, I have a feeling I, I, I got that wrong. So 150 times 60 is $9,000. Okay. What are you going to do with Disney to get $9,000 of value out of it? 
So there's a 20% merch discount. You can unlock that if you buy an annual pass. A real sore spot with DVC members right now is we used to be able to buy the second tier down annual pass that's only sold to Florida residents. And it used to save us a couple hundred bucks a year per pass. Well, if it saves me $200 a year and I'm a family of five, okay, there's a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So nine years of membership and just annual passes alone paid for it. But then there's other marketing events that DVC does called Moonlight Magic. And you'll see companies that come back in and they rent out the theme park for the entire night. So I think Pampered Chef does it. Farmers Insurance does it. A bunch of different organizations will just rent a theme park out for a night. And Disney Vacation Club looked at this and said, hey, as opposed to doing some kind of a bait and switch, we'll take $80 off your theme park tickets if you'll come sit in our timeshare pitch. DVC kind of flipped the script on that. And what they did was they said, we're going to lease out the entire theme park for a night and we're going to give it away, not to prospective buyers, but to existing members who bought from us. And so that's kind of a cool night to come into Disney where you get your own little private party. There's special character meets. The big thing is free Mickey bars. And so the joke in my community is how many free Mickey bars do you have to eat to break even on this direct contract? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go to my website, you know, mydvcpoints.com and go over to the resort wiki and you scroll down to our research page on that resort, we break it out for you. How many free Mickey bars do you have to eat to break even on 150 points? And we have some formulas on there that we update the average resale price and the direct price wow. and it calculates it for us. So it's just kind of a fun thing, but I'm like, Lynn, I don't want to eat that many calories. Okay. <laughs> but my point is how you perceive value, whether these free parties, whether the merch discounts, the $10 off a Christmas party, if you buy, or Mickey's not so scary Halloween party, DVC members, they'll take 10 bucks off a ticket. All of that stuff will add up over time. And with enough time, you will come out ahead. Okay. But you've also got the average seven to eight years in there that people own this. So I can't tell you if you're going to be coming a lot, a little, how much you're going to be here. As somebody who now lives next to Walt Disney World and has a house here, when they have a Moonlight Magic event, I'm at two out of three of them. Well, my question with that is, is it hard to get a, a vacation club villa during that if all DVC people want to come down for that. Like is the availability very limited. Local, like people, <laughs> local people will book the night. And the way that works is what she's referring to is let's say this event is happening on July 18th. So they will have a sign up date and probably sometime April they'll say, Hey, if you have a, a vacation booked and you're staying on property on July 18th, We'll open this up and you guys can come back in and get first crack at getting tickets to this free event. And then they'll offer a round two after that for if you miss the first time or you're staying off property or you're just in the area or whatever. So they generally sell out about 90% of them in that first crack, but then you can have an opportunity to get one in the second one. So is it more about if you already have something booked? It can be. If, yeah. if they do them in the summer when attendance is really down in Walt Disney World, because very few families want to come in the peak of the Florida heat, then yeah. it's easier Cleaning to come up. back in and, and book a room. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But if it's a October, November moonlight magic and you don't have a room booked when those dates pop out, you're probably not getting one yeah. unless you find a cancellation and you can slide into that. That's what I figured that it would be. Yeah. Would be tough to get in. So if you have a direct contract and then you later add on a resale contract, how does, how do the perks work if you are booking a room with your resale contract? So in 2019, Disney fundamentally changed the rules and they kind of struck back at this, this ferocious resale market. And yes, they said, gotten huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> came back in and they said, okay, any resorts we build going forward, if you buy resale, you can only stay at that resort. Now, right now, 
Riviera is the only resort that they have announced and built since then. Disneyland Tower is about to go on sale, and that should follow that model if everything goes according to plan. Now, they did convert a building at the Grand Floridian into DVC, and they made it, they kind of attached it onto the existing DVC condominium association that's there. So it's that new point at the Grand Flow right now is under the old contract. And the old contract says if you buy resale, you can stay at any of the resorts that were open prior to 2019. So you could buy Grand Flow resale today and stay any place but Riviera. If you buy Riviera resale today, you're limited to only staying at Riviera. So if it, that's a something to consider if you're interested in buying direct at Riviera mm -hmm. is know that if you want to resell it later, the person who buys will only ever be able to stay at Riviera. You as the owner, right, direct from Disney can stay at any of the resorts. Any place you want to. That's why but earlier... It, makes the resale value lower in my opinion. So I don't think I would want to buy that with the thought that I might resell it in the future. Yeah. So we're now a couple of years into this and, and here's the people who are really buying Riviera resale. A, they already own some points at Riviera. They love the resort. They know they only want to stay there. And an interesting thing is I'm a, I want to stay every place in DVC kind of a, a guy, right? I want to try Beach Club, Boardwalk, Alani, Grand Flow, Hilton Head. I want to try them all, right? There's a pretty significant part of the, our community that they only want to stay at their home resort. So I originally thought this would devastate the Riviera resale, but it's really not. As opposed to $50, $60 a point, it's it's maybe $60, $70 a point that it's it's taking. So the punishment isn't that big right now. But right now you've got people who own points that can stay every place else. So you've got a bunch of people who can go, okay, hey, look, I can stay wherever I want to with this vast majority of my points. I'll add on a Riviera resale and I'm cool with only staying there at Riviera, which means you pretty much have to book Riviera at 11 months because at seven months, it tends to sell out really, really, really fast. So let's, I think we should back up and explain home resort and that 11 month and seven month window too. Yeah. So that's a fundamental concept that says, if I buy Grand Flow, I can book Grand Flow at 11 months. I can book it at 10 months, nine months, eight months, seven months, right? But at seven months, everybody else who has eligible points to book other places in the network can also come back in and book my home resort. Now, at seven months, I can go book their home resort with eligible points. And that's where this stuff gets into this barrel of fish hooks of compl complications. Yes. yes. And they just keep making the product more and more complex, which is a guy who essentially has a part time job of explaining this to people. <laughs> You're really creating an income path for me here, Disney. But, <laughs> like, okay. So this is why we tell people, look, before you buy DVC, make an informed and educated decision. Research, 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 research. And what happens is people find our community and it becomes like crack cocaine because we don't have a dog in the fight. We're here to talk about what we love as fans of this product and welcome new people into the community. So we'll debate all of these different topics ad nauseum but you've got to get through the little bit of a learning curve to come back in and join our conversations because that, that that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. And it is really helpful to hear like on our panel that we have inside of families fly free, you know, why different people bought different things and some bought direct, some bought resale. Why did they do that? Which ones have they sold? Where did they buy and why did they buy that? And so I think, once you start to hear other people's reasonings, that starts to make more sense to you. But um, yeah, so since we bought at Grand Floridian, basically we have first dibs to book Grand Floridian 11 mm -hmm. months ahead of time. So like if we're going to go there next Thanksgiving, that means I have to buy it this month or have to book it this month yep. or next Thanksgiving. And then like I, I think the conventional wisdom here is you just grab your home resort 
anyway, like let's say we didn't really plan to stay at Grand Floridian, we really wanted to stay at, I don't know, Boardwalk, then we would grab our Grand Floridian at 11 months. And then at seven months, we could see what else was available. If Boardwalk wasn't available, we have our home resort for sure. If it is available, we can let that one, we can modify or let it go and book Boardwalk, for example. And depending on when you want to go, that's a really valid deal. Like if you're talking Christmas week, that's a really peak, 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 peak time. You're lucky to get your home resort booked. Okay. So to say you're going to switch at seven months, maybe there's a little bit of shuffling in there where at, at 8 a.m. somebody finds something and they want, and then they free up their room and you slide into it. That tends to happen. So I tell people keep checking the first couple hours of your seven month window to see if there's been some shuffling in your room now starts to open up. Well, another tip one of my members gave me was to check that 30 months, 30 days ahead of time too, because that's when you have to cancel by, right? In order to mm -hmm. not have it, we won't explain what the penalty is, but, um, and so people, you know, check around that week before, but like somehow I managed to come up with, we were originally booked at boardwalk over Thanksgiving week, which obviously would be a prime week. Um, and I decided later on, we had booked a one bedroom that I would, would prefer to stay in a two bedroom. And by just checking, as you're saying, I came up with two nights at the end in a two bedroom at beach club, which is pretty hard to get, I think anyway. And somehow I snagged it over Thanksgiving. So you just never know. And it's this, it's so similar to checking Southwest flights. You guys, it's like, you just have to keep checking, you know, um, yeah. and things pop up. So. You'll hear us say a lot in the community, stalk the website. Yeah. Okay. Just stalk it, stalk it, stalk it. And eventually you'll, you'll come back in and find something. And it is like, if you have the mindset, which I think most of my listeners do, of you know, it's kind of a game. All of this is like, how much can you get for how little, what can you find? What better deal can you get? This really is the mm -hmm. same thing. It's a game you're playing of what can you get when, and can you switch it around? And, you know, so if you like that kind of thing, um, it's, it's actually, it's kind of a fun fun game to play. I think it really is because we talk about it in our community as point stretch and splurge where you could look at this and go grand flow is kind of on the upper end here in Walt Disney world, but you could also go to Saratoga at the lower end. And there's been times when I've had a, a one bedroom booked at Bay Lake tower. And I looked at it and I was like, well, we're five people in there. There's not going to be as much elbow room as I would really like. And then lower, come to find out, I could save a few points by moving to a two bedroom at Old Key West. Exactly. And you're like, less points, more elbow room. How much is that walk to Magic Kingdom really worth versus the bus ride? And you have those kind of discussions. And, and that's what we do in, in our community is we come back in and, and do that. We have a, a live show every Sunday night where it's all about member opinions and it's very interactive on topics such as that. We'll debate one resort versus another. We geek out and nerd out on this stuff. We are super fans, but the thing of it is, is we're super welcoming to new people as well. Well, what I've loved about your show is just listening to the episodes on the different resorts and what the drawbacks and benefits are of each and what the layout is of each. What's the layout of the one bedroom? And does it have a one, you know, a yep. one bathroom or, two, you know, does it have a pullout couch or does it have the Murphy bed? Like all that stuff. That's why I ended up going with Boardwalk was after listening to your guys, your podcast on that and understanding the layout and understanding like which room type was the least likely to get booked, which I think was the pool view and the pool or garden view. Mm -hmm. um, and so like you can wait list things in there. So I knew to like wait list that because there was a better chance of it opening because less people book that particular view. So there's so many little things like that, that you can really delve into if you want to, as you're saying, really stretch the points that you bought. And that's what you're going to see a lot of DVC <laughs> members do is they start to come into it. And some of them are like, Hey man, I'm a bougie kind of person and I want grand flow. And then something kicks in with people and they start looking at this and they start going, well, you know what? I could stay seven days in a studio at grand flow, but I could get two full weekends and a week. If I've just moved to Saratoga, that's an extra two or three nights. Hmm. You know, let's move down to stay longer. 
And what you'll find in DVC is the cheapest points rooms book the fastest. Like if it's a cheap point room, it is gone in a nanosecond. Because like the Animal Kingdom is a one that's generally cheap that books fast, right? Yeah, there's a, there's some value rooms over at Animal Kingdom. And the inside scoop on them is as they converted hotel rooms to DVC, these were a little bit smaller rooms. So when DVC converted them, they called them value rooms because you're not getting as much square footage and they lowered the point cost. Well, there's only like 10 of these little studios out there and they're super cheap. They're the cheapest thing in Walt Disney World and they go instantly. And not only that, I think they're the best location in that resort that they happen to be in as well because they're up front and they're near everything. Whereas you're not walking through the entire resort to the back 40 to go down all the long hallways to maximize the amount of rooms on a savanna. So there's that too, right? But that's kind of like the nerdy details that we talk about here on our shows and what we do. And so <clears throat> I want to kind of bring this to a close, but one last question on resale. Tell us, you know, what the benefits are of buying resale. Okay. Why would so, we want to buy resale versus direct? So this is my favorite quote from Marissa at DVC Resale Market. And, and she will tell you the reason why you buy DVC in the first place is to save money on deluxe accommodations at Disney. Bar none, right? That is the fundamental reason why you buy DVC. The fundamental reason why you buy resale is to save even more money on deluxe accommodations at Disney. So it's really, truly a lower point of price coming into the deal, 50 to $60 a point, because once you own this contract, they're going to essentially be the same minus these new 2019 rules of, of restrictions and where you can stay and where you can't. But if they all function the same, you use the same system, they're the same. It's like, the same website. Yeah. yeah. It's the same website. It's literally the same exact rooms. Disney doesn't look at you like you're a second class citizen. If you right. show up on resale points, they don't care. They don't know the difference. You really buy resale to save money, which is why a lot of people who really want the perks will go buy the 150 direct and then go, yeah, but I really need like 350 to pull off that week in a two bedroom. So I'll go buy 200 points on resale. I'll get my 150 direct. Now I've got my benefits and my perks. And now I'll go buy the rest of the the points I need on resale and save the money. And I can tell you, like, I already can see that's where I'm going. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm not ready to buy another one yet, but I can see us wanting to buy another one. And that's what we will do. We now have our direct points. We would go and buy a resale contract to supplement whatever we wanted. Um, and I think, you know, too, we were talking about, you know, the potential to, um, possibly make money on your contract that you bought. And you brought up the point that, so of course, the lower price you paid for it, the more money you can potentially make or the better chance you have of breaking even if, you know, historic yeah. data continues into the future. Um, that's a key consideration, I think. Yeah. The rule of thumb is it takes about 10 years to break even with a, okay. just doing the math on what you would have paid for a uh, Disney deluxe accommodation if you buy direct. So what you paid at 10 years, you've kind of gotten your money back. Well, you can significantly shorten that by saving $60 a point and buying resale. And then that's just to get your money back from staying. But to your point, Lynn, it's what we started this show out with that theory of what if I buy this ride this for as long as makes sense to my family. And then I sell it for more than I paid for it. I think if you do some research and you buy wise, that's not completely unreasonable. It's not off the table. I love it. I think that's a gem. So as you can see here, I think we probably could talk with Chad for days <laughs> about Disney vacation club. So this was, we just dipped our toes in the water here, I think, but hopefully we, introduce the idea to you that it really can be a money savings for you if you want to stay on property at Disney regularly. Um, open your mind to that thought and go for sure check out my DVC points um, and his website and podcast for more info. So let's have you tell us all the places we can find you online and 
on social media, et cetera. Yeah. The best place is just search for my DVC points in any podcast app. And you're going to find my traditional show that's called my DVC points podcast. You'll find one called community hall live, which is our Sunday night live stream show. We just take the audio track and put it out there in a podcast. So you can get all of that debate and content there. I have another team that comes back in and they just do news, Disney news. That's like DVC member specific. They'll cover everything else everybody else does. But when it comes to news that impacts DVC members, they go er, time for a deep dive and they really start to focus in on that. So there's that show, mydvcpoints.com slash, or you can also find us on YouTube and that's where we're growing as well. The best place to kind of come back in is if you're new is search for the My DVC Points community group on Facebook. So we have like 4,100 plus members in there. And what's unique about our group is we take zero snark. I have the best moderated group out there. Like our moderators will shut down snark and they kind of follow my respectful. Everybody's here to learn kind of mentality. So we welcome new people in. There's no go Google it. If somebody asks a question, you either, it's the thumper rule, right? You either say something nice or don't say nothing at all. And so that's kind of how we run shop there. If you listen to our shows, all of that teaching mentality comes right back into the group and you can interact with us there. Yeah. And you'll be in a community of like-minded people, which I think is always great. And we have started in families fly free. We now have a quarterly DVC insider call. So um, I'm on there. And then I have one of our families fly free members who's been a DVC member. We rotate um, for years and you can bring your questions that you have. They can, if you're thinking about it or you're already a member and you're not sure how to book. And then we try to hit what the current news is um, inside of DVC, whatever's changed or new lounges they've added or new perks or that kind of thing. Um, so if you want to learn more there. All right. I think that was an awesome show. Thanks so much, Chad. Thanks for having me, Lynn. All right. Have a great week, everyone.